Hello students. We are studying first lesson gravitation. In the last video, we have studied Newton's universal law of gravitation, which states that every object in the universe attracts every other object with a definite force. This force is directly proportional to the product of the masses of the two objects and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. Now, we just need to focus on this part that the force is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. But, why did Newton assume inverse square dependence? on distance in his law of gravitation and how did he arrive at this inverse square law of gravitation he was helped by Kepler's law third law now let's see how if a planet is revolving around the sun in a circular orbit in uniform circular motion then the centripetal force acting on the planet towards the sun must be F is equal to mv square upon r. You have to remember this. If a planet is revolving around the sun in circular orbit, in uniform circular motion, then centripetal force acting on the planet towards the sun must be F is equal to mv square upon r. Where we know F is the force, M is the mass of planet, V is its speed and R is its distance from sun. Now, the distance traveled by the planet in one revolution is the perimeter of orbit, which is 2 pi r. Okay, the distance traveled by the planet is 2 pi r. And time for the revolution is equal to t. As students, we know that that uh, speed is equal to distance upon time. So we can express the value of this v by using this formula, distance upon time. So we get 2 pi r on t. Now let's substituting this value in the formula, f is equal to mv square upon r. Instead of v, we will write 2 pi r on t. By taking the squares and solving the bracket, we will get the answer 4m pi square r square 1t square upon r. We can divide this r square by this r and ultimately we will get 4m pi square r upon t square. Now students, this is the step where you have to use Kepler's third law. Okay, and what is the Kepler's third law? Kepler's third law is t squared upon r cube is equal to constant. So focus on this r cube. You have to maintain r cube in your answer. So that is the reason that we have to multiply and divide this solution by r square. And ultimately we will get 4m by r cube upon t square into r square. We just simply separate this r cube upon t square to use Kepler's third law. We know that t square upon r cube is k, so r cube upon t square will be 1 upon k. Now, we need to postulate inverse square law of gravitation. So, we have to replace this, the value, we have to replace this r square with k, so that we will get 1 upon r square. And 4m pi upon k is constant. Thus, force is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. Thus, Newton concluded that the centripetal force is the force acting on planet, which is responsible for circular motion, must be inversely proportional to the square of the distance between planet and sun. And Newton identified this force with the force of gravity, and hence postulate the inverse square law of gravitation. So students, there is one important question. How did Kepler's third law help Newton to arrive at the inverse square law of gravity? And this is the full answer for this question.